ever feel like uh, you're living a double life? Hmm. Today, we're diving into the real-life story of an actress who did just that. Oh, okay. Balancing the spotlight of One Tree Hill wow. with the secrecy of a religious group that turned out to be, yeah. well, let's just say, not what it seemed. It's a story that really makes you think twice, doesn't it? Yeah. About the groups we join and, and the subtle ways people can be manipulated, mm -hmm. even in the supposed glitz and glamour of Hollywood. Exactly. Yeah. We're unpacking the experience of Bethany Joy Lentz, who you probably know as Haley from One Tree Hill. Right. She was involved with this group for a decade before realizing it was a cult. Talk about a plot twist you wouldn't expect. It's incredibly brave of her, I think, to open up about this part of her life. Yeah. Especially considering the stigma around cults. Absolutely. So let's rewind to Bethany's early 20s. Okay. She's in L.A. trying to make it as an actress. And like many of us in our 20s, mm -hmm. searching for a sense of belonging and community. That's such a vulnerable stage of life, wouldn't you say? Oh, yeah. That longing for connection to, to find your tribe can make you susceptible to manipulation without even realizing it. Totally. And that's where this Bible study group enters the picture. Okay. At first, it seems like a godsend, right? They're singing, discussing life's big questions. It feels genuine a place where she finally fits in. And that's the thing about these groups. They often start by fulfilling a genuine need. Yeah. It's classic cult psychology, really. They create this atmosphere of warmth and acceptance, like like a warm bath on a cold day, you know? They do, yeah. Especially appealing to someone like Bethany, who was, by her own admission, always seeking that sense of belonging. It's almost insidious, isn't it? Uh -huh. How these situations can seem so normal at first. It is. And then things slowly start to shift. Right. Enter a new pastor who Bethany calls Les. Okay. He encourages people to move to this big house in Idaho, kind of like a commune setup. Looking back, it screams cult. Yeah. But I can see how at the time she's caught up in it all. That's a textbook cult tactic, actually. Really? Isolating individuals from their support systems and creating dependence on the group. Oh, wow. This slow, gradual shift is why it's so hard to recognize these situations for what they are while you're in them. Right. You get so used to the water temperature, you don't realize it's boiling. Like the frog in the pot analogy. Exactly. And what's fascinating is that Bethany's One Tree Hill co-stars, they saw the red flags. Really? They could sense something was off. Wait, really? What happened? They noticed changes in her behavior, the way she talked about the group, mm -hmm. and they voiced their concerns. Wow. Bethany even talks about how her co-star, Craig Sheffer, straight up told her he thought she was in a cult. Oh, my God. But she justified it all away. Wow. She had this preconceived notion of what a cult was, robes, Kool-Aid, the whole nine yards. And because it didn't fit that image, she dismissed their concerns. Wow. That just shows how powerful those preconceived notions can be. It's like, we see what we want to see, even when the people who care about us are waving red flags. It's a classic case of cognitive dissonance, really. We try to rationalize away information that contradicts our beliefs, especially when those beliefs are tied to a group or identity we've embraced. It makes you wonder how many of us are doing that in different areas of our lives, right? Yeah. Like, what blind spots do we have because we're so caught up in making something make sense? That's a question worth pondering for sure. It's human nature to seek consistency. Yeah. But um, back to Bethany, what's fascinating is it wasn't some big dramatic confrontation that made her realize she needed to get out. Right. It was something far more personal and, dare I say, universal. Motherhood. Okay, hold on. Tell me everything. Yeah. I have to know how becoming a mom plays into all of this. Well, Bethany becomes a mother in 2011. Okay. And as anyone who's experienced parenthood will tell you, it's a life-altering event. Oh, yeah. Suddenly, your priorities shift. You're responsible for this tiny human, and the stakes of your decisions feel infinitely higher. Oh, absolutely. It's like you're seeing the world through new eyes with this intense awareness of what really matters. Precisely. Yeah. And for Bethany, it seems like motherhood gave her the strength and clarity she needed to finally see the situation for what it was. She talks about the fear she felt, the thought of raising her daughter within the confines of this group under their control. It terrified her. That's heartbreaking. But I can see how becoming a parent would make those red flags impossible to ignore any longer. Exactly. But here's the thing about cults leaving is rarely easy. These groups are designed to make you feel dependent, like you need them to survive. Oh, wow. They instill this fear of the outside world and often use shame and guilt to control members. 
So how did Bethany actually manage to break free? What was that process like for her? It was a long and difficult journey, but it speaks volumes about her inner strength. She talks about the fear of losing her entire support system, the guilt of turning her back on what she once believed, and the shame of admitting she was wrong. I bet that took a lot of courage. It did. Imagine questioning everything you thought you knew about the world, about yourself, about your faith. Yeah. That's a lot to grapple with, but she sought support from trusted friends and family and slowly began to rebuild her life outside the group. That's so important to hear. It reminds us that even when we feel completely lost and alone, there are always people who care and want to help. Absolutely. And, you know, her story really highlights the insidious nature of these groups. It's not about being gullible or weak-minded. Yeah. Cult leaders are master manipulators who prey on our very human needs. The need for belonging, for purpose, for meaning. It's a reminder that anyone, regardless of background, beliefs, or even their perfection, even a successful actress in Hollywood, can be drawn into these situations. And that's what makes Bethany's story so powerful. It could happen to anyone. It's kind of chilling, honestly. Yeah. When you realize how easily someone can be pulled in, it really makes you question your own judgment. Like, what right. subtle forms of manipulation I'm missing in my own life. Yeah, that's such an important takeaway from Bethany's story. It's a wake-up call. Yeah. To examine the groups we're part of the beliefs we hold and to ask ourselves, are these truly serving me? Or am I holding on out of fear obligation or because I'm afraid to rock the boat? It's like that quote, the unexamined life is not worth living. It takes courage to really look at our lives with a critical eye. It does. But that self-reflection is crucial for growth. Mm -hmm. And you know what strikes me about Bethany's story is the contrast between her on-screen persona and her real-life struggle. Yeah. Here she is playing the strong, independent character on One Tree Hill right. while simultaneously grappling with this loss of autonomy in her personal life. It's almost like she was living a double life, just like we were talking about at the beginning of our deep dive. Exactly. <laughs> and it shows how we can never truly know what someone else is going through, even when we think we have them all figured out. It's a good reminder to approach everyone with empathy and compassion. Absolutely. Yeah. So as we wrap up, what are some key things we can learn from Bethany's experience? If someone's listening to this feeling concerned about their own involvement in a group or even just recognizing some of these patterns in their own life, what advice would you give them? First and foremost, I'd say trust your gut. If something feels off, don't ignore that feeling. Talk to someone you trust outside the group, someone who can offer an objective perspective. And remember, it's okay to question things, to seek second opinions, and to prioritize your own well-being. Don't be afraid to set boundaries either. Yeah. That's something I'm always working on. Yeah. It's so important, especially in situations where you feel pressured or manipulated. Absolutely. And if you're concerned about someone else, approach them with love and concern, not judgment. Shaming someone or trying to force them out of a group often backfires. Instead, just listen. Let them know you're there for them no matter what. That's really powerful advice. You know, Bethany's story, it's definitely a heavy one, but ultimately I think it's a story of resilience and hope. It reminds us that even in the darkest of times, it's possible to break free, to heal, and to use our experiences to help others. It's a story that reminds us of the power of finding your voice and using it to advocate for yourself and others. And for anyone who might be struggling with similar situations, know that you are not alone. There is help available and there is hope for a brighter future. Beautifully said. It's a powerful reminder that we all have the strength within us to overcome challenges and create a more authentic and fulfilling life for ourselves. Well, this deep dive certainly left me with a lot to think about. Until next time, thanks for joining us.